Not long ago, Poland was a poster child for post-communist success, a stable, strongly pro-Western EU member whose economic prudence helped it buck the global recession. Today, it's a poster child of so-called illiberal democracy in Europe, and the situation is only deteriorating. Since winning a razor-thin parliamentary majority in 2015, the right-wing Law and Justice Party, led by Jarosław Kaczynski, has taken aim at Poland's liberal democratic institutions. Its government has packed the constitutional court with loyalists, taken over public media, given security forces sweeping surveillance powers, and strengthened the prosecutor's powers at the expense of local authorities. Now the government has attacked the one remaining check on its power, the judiciary, with a law that gives the justice minister unilateral authority to replace the chief justices of common courts. In advancing illiberalism, Poland's government, in which Kaczynski calls the shots but holds no official position, has been working largely from the playbook of another illiberal European leader, Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban, whose Fidesz party took power in 2010. Backed by a much larger parliamentary majority, Orban's government has not only dismantled checks and balances, it has also rewritten Hungary's constitution to entrench its own authority. The difference is that Poland's government is moving much more quickly. The shift toward illiberalism has been met with some successful resistance, especially in Poland. Last year, mass demonstrations forced the government to withdraw a bill that would have banned almost all abortions. Similar protests probably persuaded President Andrzej Duda not to sign two other laws that would have undermined judicial independence. But as the recent reforms show, the power of popular protest has its limits. As for the EU, it has initiated a few legal challenges, most recently to Poland's judicial reforms. The European Commission has also launched formal proceedings against Poland and Hungary, as well as the Czech Republic, for refusing to take part in the EU-wide refugee relocation scheme. But ultimately, the EU's options are limited. With two illiberal leaders in its ranks, it can't secure the unanimous agreement it needs to impose more stringent sanctions, much less to trigger Article 7 of the Lisbon Treaty, which could result in a member's temporary loss of voting rights in the European Council. As it stands, both Orban and Kaczynski seem prepared to ignore international criticism. And as long as they have each other's backs, it's hard to see who can stop them.